In 1274, the Mongolian Emperor Kublai Khan attempted to conquer Japan, but their ships were hit by a strong typhoon. Around 13,000 men drowned, and one-third of the ships sank. This, however, didn't deter their spirits, as they would later try for the second time to conquer Japan. So seven years later, in 1281, they came again, bringing around 140,000 men to conquer and invade Japan. But again, their fleet was destroyed by a great typhoon which the Japanese called Kamikaze, or Divine Wind. After two failed attempts and many deaths, the Mongols never again attacked Japan. This is not the first time a typhoon was said to save a nation. In 1588, King Philip II of Spain attempted to conquer England, but his attempt was also made difficult by a hurricane. The similarities between these events were almost like a historical deja vu, and it happened more often than you think. For example, in 1521, Ferdinand Magellan tried to Christianize the native people of the Philippine Islands, but they ended up being killed. And in 1779, James Cook confronted the natives of the Hawaii Island, and they were also killed. In 1812, the French Emperor Napoleon, born a Corsican outsider, invaded the Russian Empire, but it ended with the fall of the French Empire. And in 1941, German Hitler, born an Austrian outsider, invaded the Russian Empire's Soviet successor state, and it also became the fall of the German Third Reich. These strikingly similar coincidences strike us with a sense of deja vu, with history seemingly repeating itself. But the sense of deja vu can only be granted to people who have the ability to remember and compare their lives to the past. Those who can't remember are doomed to repeat the same thing again and again. These are the reality of the people living with dementia. Since their brain constantly rewires itself, information becomes lost and the person can become confused and disoriented. They often have a condition called dyschronometria or time blindness where they aren't aware of the passage of time. So they might confuse between AM and PM. They don't know what day, month, or year they're in. They tell the same stories and believe they were living the past or in an earlier period of their lives, giving the impression that they're living in a loop. In one extreme case, a man from the UK was left with a 19 minute memory after undergoing a standard root canal procedure. He would wake up every day thinking that it was still 2005, the same day he went to the dentist. He, however, is still aware of his identity and his personality remains the same. But he has to adapt to this new condition and now lives with an electronic diary, prompts on a smartphone, and reminders from friends and family. The only memory he was able to form in the last decades relates to the death of his father, showing how important emotions are in the creation of our memory. All these stories of people not being able to create memories remind me of the time loop genre, where characters cannot progress through time. However, they can retain their memories and use their acquired knowledge to exit the loop. The notion of being stuck and reliving the same thing over and over sounds quite hellish, but some movies show that we can find transcendence in the loop and sanctity in the eternal now. In time loop movies, Characters are often thrown back in time to correct their past mistakes and discover self-meaning or redemption by repeating those mistakes. For example, in the Terminator films, characters with good and bad agendas are continually correcting the timeline to determine whether humanity will survive or if machines will replace them. In Edge of Tomorrow, Cage was stuck in a loop in which he died fighting aliens but he then used his knowledge from the loop to change history and defeat them once and for all. It's like playing a video game where you try and try until you win. In Groundhog Day, Phil Connors found himself trapped in a loop and didn't know how to escape it. He eventually gave up his selfish desires and endured pain and suffering to become a genuinely compassionate person. He used that knowledge to help the people of the town. He took advantage of the loop to become a better person and with that, he found a way out. This concept was very similar to Buddhism, where one was doomed to be reborn again and again until they found the correct way of living and attained nirvana, escaping the fate of 
have always been reborn. In about time, Tim learned that the man in his family had the ability to go back in time within their own lives to relive and change the past. It wasn't exactly a time loop, but he could revisit any moment as often as he liked. He could fix awkward conversations or help his friend, Harry, with his play. But he couldn't make Charlotte fall in love with him because she just wasn't interested. He was able to find Mary, his true love, after losing her phone number, but only because he had gone back in time to fix Harry's play in the first place. He also couldn't go back to before his kids were born, since changing anything before their birth would have meant erasing them from existence. That also meant he couldn't save his sister from the pain of an abusive relationship, though he could help her recover from it. Life is full of pain, and it can be avoided entirely, nor should it be. When his father contracted terminal cancer, Tim could still go back in time to see him, even after he died. But when he and Mary decided to have another child, he had to say goodbye to his father one last time. And his father understood that Tim needed to live his life this way. So for the last time, they went back together to an afternoon when Tim was a boy, which was possible only if they didn't change anything or interact with anyone else. This was the secret formula for happiness his father had talked about. Experiencing ordinary life and returning to the same days, not changing anything except his attitude towards them. Noticing how sweet the world can be, despite all the tensions and worries. That way, he could learn to appreciate life as it is. By the end of the film, he almost entirely avoided time traveling, choosing instead to experience the fullness of everyday life just like everyone else who couldn't time travel. His final line was, I try to live every day as if I've deliberately come back to this one day to enjoy it, as if it were the full final day of my extraordinary, ordinary life. This approach is very similar to Nietzsche's recommendation to experience joy in life by accepting everything just as it is. These movies show that meaning can be found in this life, even if it seems like it's always looping. We have to seek meaning within life itself, not in the escape from it. Some people in certain belief systems long for an afterlife, imagining an endless future where death no longer exists, and that is where they see eternity. But eternity can be found in each moment when we fully experience the present and have the courage to accept life's boundaries and limitations. Nietzsche believed in eternal recurrence, advocating for the total acceptance of all aspects of our lives. In another movie called Source Code, Coulter Stevens found himself reliving the same 8 minutes on a train that exploded each time. He discovered that he had been given a mission to find the bomber. He also learned that this was not reality, but rather a memory of a person who died on the train, with his consciousness placed into that person's brain. While he could interact with people and change events, these changes wouldn't affect the real world in any way. Eventually, he uncovered that he had been declared dead in Afghanistan, yet his body and mind were kept alive for this military experiment. Finding the bomber would ultimately provide valuable information that could help in the real world. Completing this mission, however, wouldn't put an end to this loop. Instead, the military would wipe his memory and use him again and again. But Captain Goodwin honored his final wish, granting him the mercy of death rather than letting him remain trapped in a state of perpetual pseudo-existence. Thinking it was the last 8 minutes of his existence, he wanted to make the best he could. So he prevented the explosion, called his father for a reconciliation, and created a moment of joy for the people on the train to make that moment as perfect as it could be. He found the eternal in each moment and made each second count. In the end, Stevens was given a chance at a new life though under the identity of the man he replaced on the train. Setting aside the implications of living someone else's life, this film suggests that transcendence can be found within the present life, without the need for an afterlife to give it meaning. Eternity is not about prolonging this life, but about finding meaning within it. Even though we can't relive our lives, we can reflect on the past through our memories, allowing us to evaluate our choices and our lives as a whole to appreciate things as they are. These characters, knowing that everything will eventually come to an end, want to make the most of their final moments, 
to bring meaning and closure to their lives. While movies can capture the suffocation of being stuck in a loop, there's no better way to experience it than actually being in the loop itself, and no medium conveys that better than games. In The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, the game is structured around a 3-day in-game time loop, which lasts about 54 real-time minutes, where you have to stop the moon from crashing to earth or everyone will die. To save everyone, you can use the time loop to your advantage as it offers a sense of predictability, immersing you in the hustle and bustle of people wandering around, following their schedules by day and night. However, to progress, you still have to complete certain tasks in a certain order at certain times, emphasizing just how important time is. In other wiles, the game is set in a shorter 22-minute time loop, where the loop resets after the sun goes supernova and destroys the system. The game uses this loop to facilitate exploration. Since the player is always restored to the starting gate every 22 minutes, you can explore the world without the fear of getting lost, and the weight of failure loses its burden, as any mistakes you make will be erased, and you'll always be restored to your original state. In another game, with an even shorter time loop, minute, you play as a dog-like thing that was doomed to live in a 60-second loop after picking up a mysterious cursed sword. So for every minute, you will die and respawn. But despite the curse of only reliving your life one minute at a time, you learn more and more about the world and its secrets with every respawn. Every decision matters, and you must make the most out of each loop. For example, you meet a very slow talking turtle and it takes your entire lifespan just to hear him finish a sentence. To get the information you need, you have to sprint directly to him from the moment you wake up. Time loops in these games emphasize the importance of time, choices, and incremental progress. Even if the loop feels suffocating or repetitive, it reminds us that every moment and decision counts. Whether we're stuck in a 60-second, 20-minute, or 54-minute loop, time is finite, and how we spend it shapes our ultimate outcome. Given the importance of memory to the perception of time, one can understand the significance of remembering history and its lessons. When history is forgotten, we can expect it to recur. For instance, as the lessons of the Cold War fade due to growing historical amnesia, people forget the fear of the imminent nuclear annihilation that existed during that era. History is doomed to repeat if it's forgotten, and now we see the US China and Russia ignoring the lessons of the Cold War as they expand and modernize their arsenals, preparing for war. Some see this as part of a larger historical cycle, often referred to as historic recurrence, where the rise and fall of human civilizations repeat over time. Some people, like Gary Trump, describe the sense of repetition as arising from the uniformity of human nature. It seems that human nature doesn't change, so the same sort of events can recur at any time. For example, in the 5th century, Zosimus looked at the Greek and Macedonian empires that fell due to internal disunity and compared them to Rome's decay, which can be attributed to the same thing. Machiavelli analyzed that politics often oscillates between order and disorder, and people are animated by the same desires and passions. So, by studying the past, it's easy to foresee what's likely to happen in future republics. Adam Micknick holds similar views, that this is just how the world is. The world is full of liars and those who are lied to, terrorists and the terrorized, inquisitors and heretics. In 18th century Samuel Johnson's words, whatever can happen to men has happened and little remains for invention. People are motivated by the same motives, deceived by the same fallacies, animated by hope, obstructed by danger, entangled by desire, and seduced by pleasure, leading them to perform the same actions again and again. Drawing similarities to the concept of historic recurrence, where events seem to repeat themselves throughout history, eternal recurrence suggests that time loops infinitely, causing the same events to happen again and again for eternity. This idea can first be associated with Stoicism, but Friedrich Nietzsche later revived it by confronting us with a thought-provoking question. What would we feel if we discovered 
that every moment of our life, every joy, every pain, every instance of suffering was destined to repeat for eternity. Would we be pleased, happy, or would we be horrified? Our emotional reaction to these questions serves as a compass for whether we are truly living our best lives. Nietzsche urged us to evaluate our actions and strive for the best possible outcomes. For this reason, before performing any deed, we should ask ourselves, are we prepared to perform this act an incalculable number of times? We may be stuck in a loop, doomed to repeat the same thing again and again. You get stuck in a job you hate, or the environment stops you from progressing. Days followed by weeks, followed by years. It's all essentially a big circle, and we do the same thing every year. Birthdays, New Year's, Christmas. Sometimes, this can be seen as hellish or nightmarish, but we don't realize that the loop is gradually changing, incrementally, every day. With every loop, there are always variations to be found, no matter how minuscule or how big. And the memory retained from every loop can help us figure out how to move forward and find meaning in the seemingly endless but subtly different loops. The limitations of a time loop remind you that time is finite, and we often take for granted the illusion of infinite time that we think we have. But life is fragile, one moment you're alive and the next, you're gone. So by putting some sort of restrictions on our everyday life, we might actually be able to appreciate it more and find a way to make the most out of each day. The future may hold grim possibilities, and when you get there, you might find yourself wishing you were back in the loop again. Like me, if you're in your 20s, your parents are probably still around with some vitality, but the future is certain. You know that this day will end. You lose your parents, your looks, the vitality of youth, and other things. So while living in a loop can feel frustrating, remember that even in the meaninglessness of repeating the same routine every day, there's sanctity in the moment, and the face of life you're living in now might just be your eternal sunshine. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you like what I do, you can support me directly on Patreon. I can't believe I've hit 1000 subscribers. It felt impossible at times, but here we are. Huge thanks to my friend who suggested this topic and has been so supportive. You can also follow me on social media and I'll try to be more active there. Anyway, the next video will probably take more than 3 weeks since I'll be traveling and may not be able to work on it. So yeah, thanks again and see you in the next one. Take care.